Hi, I'm John, K5DUT. All-Star is a growing voice over IP mode and has the ability to be well scripted and change much of the programmer's wants and needs. Well, thanks to Ben Crompton, WA3DSP, there's an image available that works terrifically with Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. This image is for the most part plug and play, requiring very few, if any, changes in the configuration files. This image is also preloaded with a number of scripts such as weather warnings, web control, etc. Most All-Star nodes have Motorola Max Tracks or Motorola Radius radios as the RF deck. One downside to these radios is that they need to be programmed with an old DOS computer. Modern emulation will work in some instances but tends to be buggy and can break a radio if you're not careful. Well, with the add-on script from Doug, we can reprogram these radios remotely via the internet with much reliability. Thanks to Doug W3DSP and Dave KB4FXC for undertaking this project. All that would be needed in addition to this All-Star node would be a programming cable for these radios. While Doug recommends a USB to serial converter, I used one that went straight to USB with no problems. Let's get started. Asterisk menu in the Hamfoip image. And so what we're going to do first, and I'm following the website at hamfoip.org forward slash hamradio slash Motorola underscore programming. It goes through a technical description, hardware, and some software download configuration. Here we're going to be doing the software configuration. Now I have already done this before. Uh, so it might look slightly different. So we're going to go down here to number 9, start Bash Shell Interface, we're going to hit Enter, and there it is, we get our prompt. Now what I'm going to do with PuTTY is just straight up, go over here to the web page, come over here, copy, and I'm going to right click, and you see there that uh, it's been pasted. And then I'm going to hit Enter. We're going to let us do its thing, checks for things up to date, and uh, it's going to see that it's pretty much the same thing. Download and installation size is going to only be one point, pretty much two megabytes. If you hit yes, it downloads the packages. And then we're back again at the command prompt. So, what we do next is we need to execute some commands. Now, this is PuTTY, and of course we're SSHing into the Raspberry Pi, but what we need to do is set up a remote desktop. And since the image currently doesn't support a desktop environment uh, in order to save processing power, we need to uh, set it up to forward one. So what we do is we execute the following commands. This one gives us the shell, which means it executed correctly. We'll also do this one. And we'll do this one. It's important to make sure you go to the hamvoip.org website to make sure that you get these commands properly instead of just copying them down from uh, this video. Although all this will be in the description. Now we will need to go and plug in the uh, USB cable that I have. Now this USB port for me came up as TTY USB 0 uh, when I was testing this earlier and uh, that's what the um, software is set up to use is to program uh, using the cable at port TTY USB 0. It shouldn't have to change anything and I only have two things plugged into my Pi uh, via the USB port. That is the right now the serial to converter chip or uh, well programming cable as well as the URI interface. So now what we need to do is go back to our terminal and as per the handbook.org website we're going to type D E D M E S G and we'll notice a bunch of things popped up. But if you look at the last three lines, FTDI USB serial converter detected, detected, FTDI USB converter now attached to USB zero. Great. Awesome. Le in lovely color too. Uh, you, there's one note thing also he notes here on the hamvoip.org website is that um, FTDI interfaces and clones uh, while reporting with FT232RL may not work. Clones usually cost less than 10 bucks, uh, often $3 or less. Uh, I expected or expect to pay more than 10 to $12 for a real interface. I paid, I think, uh, $12 for this cable. It was quite some time ago and I don't remember. And uh, so now we need to just set up the visual interface uh, with the computer. Following the websites, he also has instructions for both Linux and Apple Mac.
So this isn't just for a Windows computer. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Home Edition. We're going to go to Installer Edition. Let it download and go through the install steps. The old adage, click next, 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 finished, and pretty much will be done. Now we'll open up the zip file, WinRAR, close out of that, and we'll click the installer, preparing to install. Next, after reading the license agreement, which I already have before, I accept, next, next, install. Yes, I want that device to make changes, and finish. And close out of that. Now I'll go down here, I'll type MOBA X term, enter. There we go. <laughs> I think I opened up multiple times of it. That's okay. Unpacking the software. And it's doing its first in time initial setup. We can close out of this. Yes, allow access to private and local networks. Now one thing to keep in mind, and if you've set up Echolink on your Raspberry Pi that you're using for your node, you probably already know this, but if you want to access this from remotely out the internet, of course I got another thing to allow access, you need to port forward this port through your firewall uh, for the mobile X term. Now me, locally, I have my node in my garage, and I'm in here in my bedroom uh, remotely using the node, with my HT, and with this I can remotely change the frequency, which is very nice. And also for other general programming for radios such as use in repeaters, etc. Alright, once installed, select session, PuTTY sessions, or SSH rather. Now we're going to enter in our host name. We can specify a username, and in this case it'll be root. We'll click OK. I'll enter my password details. Sure, why not? And here we are into the remote desktop. And here you can also, much like PuTTY, although I still prefer to use PuTTY, we can see a file directory over here, which is rather nice, so we can do like an FTP. If you want to use yours as a web server, I've uh, contacted Doug, uh, to f I've found the uh, folder that you can put in some web files, but you wouldn't want, really want to use this as a web server um, if you had the other web client stuff in there, uh, as it could take it more processing power that your all-stock node probably could benefit from. Alright, so here we are. And uh, again, as according to the Hanfoyt website, we're going to select item number 9, start the bash shell interface, and run selected items. Notice how I'm clicking on these now, instead of going up and down with the arrow keys. Now here, we're going to type DOSBox. It's going to do a few things, and we have this new web window pop up down here. Now here, this is the program um, running in DOSBox where you can see the tree so you don't have to manually um, go through and find which one. Now the radio I have in there currently is a max track, I believe. So what I'll do is I'll tab, use the arrow down keys to max track, hit enter, I'll hit tab. I'll go down here to maxtrack.exe, or that's Meritrack, my apologies. Oh, I'm on Meritrack. Let's go down here to maxtrack, enter, tab, in the .exe file, which is the executable file. Hit enter, here we are, hit enter again, and here we can read and do our code plug stuff and what have you. So here. I'm going to go to get the code plug, and I am using the F3 uh, keys on this keyboard. Uh, 
I prefer to do it this way than on my Windows 7 laptop. This is actually my desktop. So I don't have to hit the function key and then like the number keys. But uh, let's see here. Let's read the radio. Requires the rib. So it's accessing the serial bar bus and it's actually reading the radio right now. And as you can see here, it's reading the code block. And it looks as if it's successfully read all the code block. It's decoding the data. So we just sit here. We can go F10 to go return to the main menu. Let's view the code plug, F4. And let's look at the frequency list, F5, mode configuration, which is uh, Motorola's term for uh, channel frequency and CTS zones, etc. Here you can see I have a channel with the, on the name, it's 31, for it's my uh, 2 meter repeater, 14531. This is actually the receive radio for it. And uh, well, that's not too terribly important, but let's show you how to add a mode. If you go to F4, you'll see that this is a 8 mode radio, and there's only one mode in there right now, as it says mode 001. Now let's see here. What I can do is go to F8 mode utility, and I can add a mode. I'm going to hit F8 to execute. So I've added a mode, which is like adding a channel, so to speak. Now there is a mod for some of these radios where you can add more additional channels by adding a uh, RAM chip, I believe it is. I haven't done that personally, nor would I. So F4 to next mode. And you can see it has the exact same information as we do on channel 1, which I've titled uh, 3 1. So I'm going to call this one 58 for 146.58 cent bucks. And what I did was I just hit the tab there and I went down to receive frequency. Let's type 146.58000 tab. 146.58000 tab. Transmit PL. And I just down again shift shift or tab tab and then I went to the arrow key and it had a hundred Hertz uh, PL top all right I'm going to hit uh, tab again receive signal system we don't really need any of that transmit PL if you want to have a transmit one with an all-star node I highly do recommend everyone run PL now due to the kind of this radio it, do, it doesn't really like frequencies below 146. And let me add another mode by going, well, hit the Windows key. By going to F8, mode utility, let's add another mode, F8 again. Please wait, it's add a mode. F10. So let's hit F4, and here we are on 03. Let's just say, I don't know, let's add a frequency of 145.000. I'm not saying this is my node frequency that's in the packet band, packet sub band, experimental band, and I wouldn't recommend putting your frequency here on any repeater frequency or any packet frequency. Tab. And you notice up here it says valid range is 146.000 to 174. If I hold shift and type 145, unrelease the shift, decimal point, Zero, 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 and complete it out and hit tab. It says warning, frequency may be out of band. Radio may need retuning to operate. But it does take 145.000 and it will use it. Okay. Let's set our transmit frequency. Oh, I don't know. Um, let's do 145.000 simplex. So what I'll do again is I'll hit shift, 145, release shift, decibel point, Shift again, zero, 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 zero. Tab, tab, down arrow, tab, 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 tab. You get the gist, gist here. So what we'll do, say I'm done with this, we hit F10. Let's hit F10 to go to the main menu. And here we are. Now it would be a good idea to save your code plug. So what we'll do is we'll go to F3. We'll go to F7 for save code plug. Archive file does not exist. Create to continue a new file or F2 to abort or F10 to abort. So we're going to continue because we want to create a new file. Customer ID. 
I'll just put in my call sign. It says press F8. Archive not found. Oh, there we go. And it, of course, it gives us the backup path, etc. Install backup disk. All right. F10 to abort the backup. We'll just abort it. What we need to do is we need to write it to the radio. So hit F10 to exit. All right, to program, we hit F3. And a program data into radio code plug requires rib. Hit F8. We hit F2. You can see over here in the terminal that it's uh, sending data and the actual baud rate and whatnot to communicate to the USB rib. And it'll start here in just a moment. Here it is coding away the match track. And the steps are very similar for the radius. You just select a different uh, program, and it may look and feel a different, uh, like those warnings pop out with that red square uh, rather than being up in the top right. And there we have it. We just programmed a Motorola Max Track 300. Now, while this is a very good thing to program your radios remotely, you can't really use this as a remote base as it takes so much time to program it. Uh, it wouldn't be really something you want to use live. But if you disconnect your node from any sort of network and remotely change the frequency that way, I think it might be viable and justifiable. Now, and you really only have the one mode because you can't remotely change channels unless you want to go into the GPIO and remotely switch it up and down. But this still serves as a great way to program these radios. Again, remotely is a great thing too. Now, I haven't tried uh, using, say, the 16 pins on the back as my node as I go through the mic jack on these radios. But you might possibly be able to both program and have the URI connected to the radio at the same time. Like I said, there's a variety of radios that can be programmed with this, as we saw in the tree. I simply get out of here and F10 to DOS, F2. You can see all the radios that it can program. GM300s, some EF Johnsons, some Meritrax, and some Max Tracks, Vertexes, and X9000s. Of course, you have to have the the uh, control, the, mm, I'm sorry, programming cable. But still, this is a very viable system. And I'd like to thank Doug and Dave again for setting up this great program for use for us. 73, guys. K5DUT.